<laughs> there we go. Okay, let's redo it. Dieter Bill's from Cincinnati. Uh, your friend Robin gave you the diet, kind of the Christmas present. And you started in uh, right around New Year's. Correct. So talk yeah. about your weight loss from this year. Yeah, this year, um, like I entered the year um, at 227, um, and I'm currently at here in October uh, 176.5 or 0.4, something like that. Um, so over 50 pounds, uh, it's been incredible. Just absolutely been incredible. All right. So what's what's the most incredible thing or the best thing about losing 50 pounds in, in under a year? <laughs> well, it just feels like getting your life back, you know, um, being, you know, participating in it rather than wondering why, you know, your body's falling apart. I tell people, you know, so many of my friends are, you know, aging like myself and they're like, my body's falling apart. And um, I've had the opposite experience. I just turned 60 in June. And um, I, I found through the diet that if you treat your body well and you fuel it with good fuel and you move around a little bit, your body will heal itself to the maximum extent possible. I abuse my body largely for the first five plus decades. Um, I'm, I just noticed I'm wearing my Marine Corps uh, hoodie, but um, I spent four years in the Marines and that was maybe the previous time I was that healthy. But the, the intervening years were, you know, I just didn't treat it well. And I had all the normal maladies of the standard American diet, the sad diet, you know, and, and, um, and, but now it's, it's, you know, I had reflux, I had high blood pressure, I'm off all those meds, um, because I'm in, because of that, I don't snore at night. So I sleep better because I sleep better. I think more clearly, um, I have more energy exercise went from being kind of this thing I've got to do to maintain my weight up at that crazy high level to something I, you know, I eagerly anticipate almost, um, not almost, I enjoy exercise now. I've run two triathlons um, in this time, uh, which I always said, yeah, one day I'll do a triathlon, maybe even an Ironman, you know, <laughs> but I wasn't getting around to it anytime quick. So um, yeah, it's, it's just all that. It's given me all, all of that, that we're, you know, pipe dreams are seen, you know, unobtainable just a year ago yeah, two triathlons and you were you were riding a bike before that right yeah trying, yeah try to maintain or lose a little yeah. weight you know i thought yeah get on a well um i don't know it started kind of you know just as a way to commute get a little bit of exercise in you know i ran a ton when i was in the marines but um since i got out you know you know running was not up there but i felt cycling was an easy way to get you know, get my heart rate up without having to do the actual running. Um, so I was, you know, I was, I would do, uh, when I was pre pandemic, I'd do at least a hundred miles a week on my bike and I couldn't lose any weight. Uh, you know, I, I maintained my diet, but I was exercising, you know, I was burning a ton of calories every, every week and not getting anywhere. Well, yeah. Well, what but, what did you learn about exercise and weight loss by going through the education that we gave you? Um, I learned that it's not calories in, calories out, which is the big fallacy, you know, that I was operating under. Yeah. I learned that um, there are, sorry for that, there are healthy fats um, and uh, that the low fat craze or whatever that swept the nation has largely been debunked in that we should be eating healthy fats. And um, yes, I mean, I think that's the, the most of it. It's like hyperinsulinemia and um, trying to uh, stop the body from um, gorging. It's we're not gorging, but, you know, production of insulin that drives this fat storage, no matter what you're doing. Um, 
and that was, yeah, that was really transformative for me making that in, uh, that was what was so helpful about plan Z was, you know, that drip campaign of, you know, information of uh, little tiny digestible chunks of information to help you understand what's going on with your body and why this works and not only why it works, why it's a good idea to continue. Well, I, I'm glad you consume that information and obviously you, you've taken it to heart because insulin is what drives the fat into your cells and keeps it locked in there. And, uh, you know, Plan Z has a little bit of intermittent fasting and it's got a low mm -hmm. carb, low sugar. And that's why the weight comes off very quickly as you demonstrated. Everybody worries about reboot. So you've done, you're in your second reboot now. Yeah. How did the yeah. first one go in terms of um, ma maintenance? It went well. Um, I gained a little bit because I was um, maybe took my eye off my caloric intake a little bit as I was training for the triathlons. Mm -hmm. um, and I haven't really gotten very good yet at um, uh, like nutrition around, you know, those, <laughs> you do a heck of a lot of exertion over a short period of time and getting the calories right. Um, in, in the supplements that I've been using to, um, to uh, recover or prepare for an exertion like that. Um, I haven't nailed that down yet. So I think, you know, I was kind of going up a little bit, but I still had about 20 pounds to get off me. I, was, I stopped around just around the 190 range at, on the first reduction. And so I had about 20 more pounds to get off. So lost about like 30 and then 20 in the two rounds of reduction. Did, how um, much did you gain back in that first reduction? So um, probably about maybe, now I didn't get it to 200. I got close, maybe seven pounds, Okay, I think. But that was a fair trade off to me to be able to say, hey, I ran two <laughs> triathlons, you know? Um, so, but it, it still showed me that, you know, got to keep your eye on your uh, caloric intake. I was weighing myself consistently, um, not every day, but pretty much every day, you know, f at least five times a week, I would say every week. But um, so I saw it coming up, but, you know, I couldn't argue with the success that I was seeing and I was, you know, living life and enjoying it. But I knew, okay, I'm not done yet. Plus I wasn't at goal yet. I want to get to 170. Um, BMI says for my height, which is 5'11 and three quarters, um, that uh, I should be uh, 172 or below. I think it goes 172 down to something. I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to be in the 170 area. So this, this morning I was, I'm still 6'3 and it's 198 even. So I'm, I'm no longer overweight. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, BMI I was 24.75. Right. I went, I was so excited on the first round of reduction going from the morbidly obese, just the obese <laughs> category. I said, I'm obese. You know, it's like, you know, that it's is a big obese. thing. And, and it's not bad, you know, but I mean, being a healthy weight, which I'm only a couple, few pounds from right now is um, really exciting. Um, you know, I don't know that I've done that since the the Marine Corps days, like right after I came out, I started living life, you know, and never looked back. Well, it happens to most of us that uh, you you can gain a pound a year and pretty soon you're 50 pounds overweight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's all it takes. Um, yeah. You know, when Zola and Robin, your, your partner, girlfriend, girlfriend whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah. um, your long distance girlfriend, Robin, heard, it, heard about this in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And uh, she said she was worried whether or not you could uh, uh, carry out the plan by yourself and cook and do those kinds yeah. of things. So talk about how you did that the first time around. Sure. Um, she was justifiably concerned. <laughs> um, we, you know, we do pretty good in the kitchen. I don't mind cooking. Um, uh, and we had kind of formed this bond around making very delicious, but too slightly, or maybe not slightly, but too decadent desserts, you know, like 
pies and cakes and ice creams and stuff. And maybe that was her way to lure me into the kitchen and it worked. However, um, when she gave me the diet, she was concerned, you know, okay, she didn't know that much about it yet, but she heard, you know, and seen great results. Um, and so I, we're in a long distance relationship. So I spend some time in North Carolina and I'm back here in Cincinnati um, off and on. And we were together for the holidays. And so I said, if this is going to work, I have to learn how to prepare what I'm going to eat when I go home by myself. So I said, I'm not kicking you out of your own kitchen, but, you know, you got to let me do the work and then you can steer me on, you know, uh, how, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, whatever, that kind of thing. And so for that week after uh, Christmas or after New Year's, um, I fixed all the meals and um, I found that it was, you know, there, there wasn't a whole heck of a lot I had to learn how to do to eat well on plan Z and reduction. It just, it wasn't that difficult. So what were some of the first meals that you remember making? Like um, the one I really enjoy, um, two of them are the, uh, the chicken breasts with the uh, French pan sauce and that pan sauce. And you, you think like, oh, the French pan sauce, you, it's like, oh, this is going to be hard. It's so easy to make. <laughs> And it makes all the difference for the chicken. It's um, amazing. And then uh, there's uh, the sloppy Joe recipe, which is, that's probably the most difficult thing to make, but it is so good that you don't mind going through it. And it's not that difficult to make once you, you know, you do it like the first time you're going to say this is going to get hard, but you get four or five helpings out of it. Um, I think I get five. And then so, um, I eat one and then I put four away for the remainder of the week and, you know, lunch every day is a treat, but, um, it's so, you know, after you make the second batch, you just kind of get it down. And so you have that for, um, meals, um, the Asian, there's a, uh, um, a Asian salmon, oh, yeah. um, oh shoot, baste it or whatever, a glaze. Yeah. Yeah. That's super simple to make. Um, and, you know, wild caught salmon's available right now. Uh, so and that's a great dish too. And, and how, do you, how do you serve your sloppy joes? I do it on a uh, uh, bib lettuce as a wrap. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I just put it on there and it's, it's delicious. It's, yeah, it's some vegetables. And, yeah, yeah it, it's, a, it's a great dish. Um, so you've talked about that in, in Reboot, what kind of recipes do you make? In Reboot, it's, it's funny because um, you get to add the fats back. So um, we've, Robin and I were experimenting. She, like, I got really good at making salads. Mm -hmm. and I do like a chopped salad and we just pile it with veggies. And then we do a uh, balsamic vinaigrette with some um, flavored uh, uh, olive oils. There's a uh, One's called Mission Fig that's fig infused. And then another one is apple infused. And, um, and then you pour that over the salad. And it's like having your dessert before dinner. It is just so good. And it's, that's the other thing, you know, I mean, I've always known you've got to eat your uh, healthy portion of vegetables, but um, I just enjoy them so much more, whether it's my, you know, hypothalamus being rebooted, my body craving it or, or my, palate has been reset somehow or whatever. Um, I'm not sure what it is, but I just really appreciate vegetables more. And the fresher, the better, the more local, the better um, from my perspective. And um, so, yeah, salads, you know, are like, you know, a treat and just heaped with vegetables. And then the other vegetables that, you know, you'll prepare with your meal. We do a lot of asparagus. We do, um, cabbage with onions um we do uh chard swiss chard and just all sorts of stuff sauteed up um you got it down um, yeah you can add the salad dressings back you can have some avocado yeah. you can do a lot of other things oh the amazing thing is breakfast um <laughs> my <laughs> so i do Robin taught me a little trick with uh, scrambled eggs, uh, putting in a little heavy whipping cream. Mm -hmm. So fat 
heavy whipping cream in with two eggs and I blend it up in a little ninja blender and then, um, and then cook the eggs. And then right before the eggs are done, I add in a couple or a few little pats of cream cheese and, uh, and serve that up and have it with a couple slices of bacon, you know, and it's, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. I love that breakfast. And you don't need the toast and hash browns if you eat that first. Don't miss it. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) That'll you, keep you. That'll keep you full. Yeah, it keeps you. Yeah, and and you're not ravenous by lunch, and you know, go get a burger and fries, and you know, sugary soda or anything like that. No, nope. you can do a, uh, you know, uh, something light. You know, a lean turkey with some cheese, um, and a vegetable or whatever, and that that'll hold you till dinner. And then we usually have some type of you know, extravagant dinner, because I've kind of learned how to cook now, I can do more and more. And it's not a chore. uh, Like it used to be when I think, Oh, my gosh, Oh, you know, I've got to fix this or that or whatever, there's going to be so much work with this. It's, you know, you start slow, and you just build on it. And it's amazing where it'll take you. And uh, yeah, or, you know, being in the kitchen, preparing meals, healthy, fresh, you know, meals is, uh, is fun. Well, I know that uh, in 2020, till about St. Patrick's Day of this year, 2021, we ate at home for 347 days. Yeah, yeah. And we we used to have lunch out seven days a week. And I have so much more money in my checkbook right now than I've ever had because you, you cook for yourself and you you. You know, meal is so it, it's healthier. It, it takes a little longer, but you, but you you lose the weight and you feel better, and you save some money. Yeah, and everyone says, yeah, but healthy food costs more. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but here's here's the thing I noticed is I would always shop with the intention of preparing things and never prepare it and wind up eating out all the time. Um, and then wind up tossing all that. So I was, you know, paying double. And now I, you know, I shop at places that, you know, some, you know, whole food type of places that are slightly more expensive, you know, fine, but the nutritional value I get from it and not wasting much of anything anymore gets wasted in my refrigerator and, um, you know, not, not eating out. I was, I was there with you. (laughs) You know, I ate out so much, but you yeah. give control to whomever is preparing your food when you are eating out. And the way to success for me with Plan Z was to, you know, take control of that. And every once in a blue moon, you know, I was uh, because of work or some other situation travel, you know, I had to eat out. Uh, but I knew how to eat out wisely um, and what to what to avoid. But you know, those were rare times. The bulk of the time was I wanted that in my control, what I was, you know, eating. And so I could be confident um, when I stepped on the scale and, and the weight just came off. So it was, it wasn't expensive to do. It wasn't hard to do. Um, um, and the quality of the food I was eating was so much better. Yeah, dieter bills lost 50 pounds, maybe a little bit more, two, two reductions. Um, I love the way you're talking about cooking. We had, <clears throat> I, I interviewed one of our dieters years ago and he said, the money I saved on Tums, could you mention, uh, as we, he said, I was doing two packs of Tums a day. He said, yeah. I didn't have to ever buy another pack and pay for the diet right there. But if you get off your meds, if you get off your uh, GERD medicine, all those things uh, add up and uh, you, can, you can take that money and buy good food. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I, I totally identify with that. I think it was two weeks in that, um, you know, I was even medicated. I wasn't waking up with reflux. And I thought, this is interesting. You know, in the middle of the night that anybody who suffered from it mm-hmm. you know, will identify with that. And two weeks in, it stopped. And I was still medicating at that point. But, um, you know, uh, I think it was couple months later, I had my first 
doctor's visit who noticed the change thinking what's going on here bill you know it's different when you know you this, we always dreaded going to the doctor and you know them saying you got to lose some weight and then when the doctor tells you before there's been anything you know hey you're you know something's going on here tell me about this and uh that's when you know it's it's really starting to pay off but um then i came off the meds and the reflux didn't come back and i just switched doctors so I think my doctor believed that I wasn't always going to be on it, but my previous doctor had said, yeah, this is just something you're going to take the rest of your days. Um, maybe because he figured I'd never change my attitude or whatever, but towards food. Um, but yeah, coming off that and a high blood pressure meds, my blood pressure just kept coming down, 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 down. Um, it was amazing. So, yep. Don't pay for any of that stuff anymore. Happens to a lot of them. Um, yeah, <clears throat> the, the three stages of life, youth, middle age, and G are looking good. Um, what, what kind of compliments have you gotten besides the one <clears throat> that your doctor gave you? Um, I don't know. You know, it's just, <laughs> I was at my niece's wedding um, last month, and Robin was there with me, and she had this beautiful dress on and got a lot of compliments from it, but the amazing thing was people would say right after complimenting Robin, they'd compliment me and say something like, and Bill, you look incredible. And I'm like, what? <laughs> you know, I was just in a gray suit or whatever, but I, I didn't, you know, it didn't really land with me though. It should have that, you know, some of these people hadn't seen me in quite some time, distant relatives, whatever. And they remember me um, prior to that in uh, my old weight. Um, and so, yeah, it was, that, that was really, that drove it home. And I was already feeling good, but to get that external validation from people, coworkers, um, because we've been in, you know, lockdown. And as we slowly started to return to the office, um, I was still mostly virtual, but we, we go into the office on occasion and, uh, I ride my bike in as I always do. But, um, now, you know, when I hop off and, um, we have a shower there and work, come out of the shower and, you know, walk into the space and now wearing smaller stuff. This is still a large hoodie. I got to get another hoodie, but, um, you know, wearing smaller clothes and they can see that the beer belly, the dad bod there is gone or, you know, disappearing rapidly or, um, you know, they say, that's incredible. Tell me, how'd you do this? And I tell them all, <laughs> um, you know, but, uh, yeah, that type of thing. You'll get a ton of external validation if you need it. Um, I, you know, my, I think the transformation really has to start within, um, and you've got to want it bad enough. But uh, yeah, you'll get plenty of internal and external validation if you stick with That's it. That's absolutely true. Um, just a couple more questions. What, what was your biggest concern when you started? Uh, that you would miss some food that you loved, or uh, that you I always, right. Yeah. I always describe myself as an Epicurean, which is somebody who likes the good things in life, essentially. Um, and that's what I was really worried about. Um, you know, I wouldn't find foods that I'd like, or it'd be too hard or whatever, you know, I mean, all the usual stuff that the stigma of every diet I tried previous to that had kind of put on me that it was going to be more of the same. But again, the the information that you provide, um, the dieters, the recipes that are available. Um, you know, I think that alleviated a lot of that. Having someone for support, you know, having Rob in there to kind of help me uh, through, you know, that, that played a part and I won't deny it, but, um, you know, it's, those were the chief concerns. Just could I do it and will it be like every other diet? And, you know, but uh, just, you know, with a open, open mind and open heart, I just embraced it and said, okay, let's see where this goes. So why wasn't it like any other diet? Because of the support um, and the recipe? The, the support, Zilla was there, you know, with uh, personalized emails and um, when needed. Um, uh, and then the e daily emails you receive with information, um, the fact that you see results almost instantly, um, right. you know, is like, oh, this is, 
you know, this is good. You know, I'll keep, I'll keep riding this train for a bit. Let's see where it goes. Yeah. Um, we did the skeptics guarantee, but you know, nine days in or 10 days in when it expires, you're like, no, I'm, you know, so that's all it really takes. If you, yeah. I'd say, Robin said, you know, we could do anything for 50 days. Well, think of that 10 days for the skeptics guarantee. You can do anything for 10 days. And I would say, pour yourself into this for 10 days. Just give it 10 days of your absolute best method, uh, effort and you're going to see amazing results. Um, and that's what, you know, did it for me. I'm glad you mentioned that because I invented the skeptics guarantee. Because <laughs> <laughs> I was skeptical when Zola started this thing. Yeah. And I said, and, and, it, and I just... Uh, when she started this diet, I was uh, eating the food and then getting a little bit of quinoa or some kind of carbs with mine. Yeah. And uh, I, I lost 10 pounds while she was on the first round. I said, this yeah. is real. Um, yeah. Because you, you cut out so many bad things. Um, what's, your, what's your outlook on life going forward? Um, I don't know. You know, I used to be that pessimistic old guy. <laughs> Or aging guy, I shouldn't say old. Um, and now I think, and I think some of some of this transformation started before Plan Z, but it's just I'm so grateful for the opportunity of every new day because instead of seeing problems every morning when I wake up, I check I I tend to view it more as an opportunity, um, and I'm grateful for that opportunity to you know, work on myself, work on my health, especially, um, you know, I have, I, I mentioned earlier in Ironman, I don't have plans to do a full Ironman, but I have plans to end next triathlon season. So next fall, I plan to do a half Ironman. Um, and, uh, I'm going to start the, the next season in May with a triathlon in uh, White Lake, North Carolina. And, you know, just having that out there is like, it feels awesome to have positive things. And if you, you know, there's always going to be some problem that's going to confront you. But um, I feel like if I hadn't got the weight off, all of that stuff would have remained a pipe dream for me. Um, and nothing that I'd ever even tried to dabble, you know, dip a toe in the water to even try aside from the cycling, which I just enjoy. But which now I enjoy even more. Um, I, I mentioned when we spoke previously, Robin and I completed a 302 mile bike ride from Pittsburgh to Washington, DC yeah. in six days. Um, you know, cycling's just a part of me. And, uh, but that was a lot easier without that 30 pounds on me um, from before. And now with an additional 20 off, it's just so much enjoyable, more enjoyable. I know bikers are always trying to, uh, reduce the weight of their bike you know, that water bottle is too heavy <laughs> yeah and yet yeah. if you take off uh, 50 pounds you've got to be okay. you don't have it's, to worry about the weight of the bike so much yeah totally um i think my average pace just kind of turning the pedals over was something around 12 miles an hour when i was um you know 220 whatever and now i uh, just uh when i got to the end of this reduction phase, I went out on the trail and I was holding 18 miles an hour without any problem. And it's like, yeah, take 50 pounds off your body and see what, what it'll do for you, how it'll change you. So, yeah. Let's leave it right there. Dieter Bill from Cincinnati, thanks for the great uh, advice and, and the stories of your success.